freelance web developer, designer, dude. Um, and we are going to talk about rules module this morning. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get rolling. So first of all, uh, who has heard of rules module? Probably most people have. Please raise your hands or make some sort of move to do Yes, cool. All right. <clears throat> yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. We are awake on a Sunday morning. Um, so I have a couple disclaimers to throw out up front. Uh, one is that I have come relatively late to the rules party as far as, uh, in the sense that I've been using it very, very lightly for a long time, but uh, only recently started to think, hey, you know, I could probably understand this thing a little better. So I don't know nearly everything there is to know about it, but we are going to go over some things that at least I know in my case until somewhat recently I did not understand and thought would be worth talking about. Um, this is going to be a Drupal 7 uh, centric talk, but if you are interested in seeing rules make it to Drupal 8, which is looking quite good, um, there is a hashtag and a website to check out. Um, there was a funding campaign to get it to a certain point, which has, uh, which has worked out, and uh, they're working toward uh, just making it, making it happen. So um, I know I, I personally would like to see that. Okay, so what is rules? It's a small family of modules that you can use to uh, make your site do stuff. The three modules that come in just the core rules download are rules itself, the framework, the, the user interface module, and another, another one called rules scheduler, which we will talk about, which just pretty much just like it sounds, but actually using the thing can possibly be a little tricky. Uh, it has some very uh, friendly friends. Um, including flag module, views bulk operations, and commerce and Ubercart. Uh, there are others as well. There's, there are several modules. We, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how many, but there's several good ones for uh, enhancing rules itself. But as far as contributed modules that don't have rules in the name that are uh, really useful to use with rules, those are a few. And so to me, the most important thing about rules is that uh, if you're using Drupal in, in any of the common use cases, you might already have rules installed whether you're using it explicitly to do your own stuff or not. So as long as it's there, you should probably, you know, learn it better and actually use it. This is what I was telling myself. So, okay. All right, so how does rules actually work? Um, if you're familiar with the idea of hooks in Drupal as a developer, it's kind of like a an easier way uh, with a nice user interface of doing a lot of the same stuff. So this is a, a dramatization of how rules works. Uh, so we start out with an action. Pow! Something happens. This could be anything that, uh, almost anything that has a hook in Drupal. Ha I shouldn't say that. Not almost anything that has a hook, but something that you could describe as an event or, you know, uh, just something happening will have an event in the rules uh, way of looking at things. So a simple example of this is content was posted, or a comment was posted, or somebody bought something, or you know, basically anything happening, probably rules is going to be aware of that. So after that happens, the next thing that happens is we need to find out, does anyone want to act on something? And so rules will just kind of use Drupal's way of finding those things out and say, hey, does anybody want to do anything right now? These are conditions. And then after that, shablam, something else happens. And these are actions. So every time you create a rule, you are setting up, uh, you're looking for an event, and then you're possibly checking some conditions to see, if, to see if it is actually a context in which you want to act, and then you do something. Um, it's pretty simple, but there, there are three parts to every, every rule. Okay, so a few important points to make uh, in general about rules. Uh, one is that it... Its handbook on Drupal.org is actually pretty good. There's a, a good amount of documentation on there, and, and were anyone to actually read it, we would all understand rules a lot better. Um, another point that uh, this, and this was salient for me in, in recent site builds, is that it can, uh, by using rules more effectively, you can get rid of some custom code that you've written. You can get rid of other modules that you might have installed to do things that rules can do by itself and actually pretty easily. Um, which is always good, you know, fewer modules we can, we can uh, stand to use the better. Um, this is especially the case when you might want to provide a UI for something. Um, so there, there are some things that 
that I've written, again, I've written custom code for where the, you know, if I'm getting lazy, there might be things hard-coded in there where if I were to use rules, then I could actually, you know, provide myself or the client a user interface to change some of these things without having to um, change the code. Rules has some, some features that are uh, built in that in my case I didn't necessarily understand as well or, or in some cases even really knew they existed. Like the scheduler, um, there, is a, there is a looping capability that lets you execute the same rule against a list of things um, that again you can create right there in the rules UI. And then components, which I've seen but I, I know I was kind of like, huh? What, what, are, what are components? So we, we will uh, talk about those. And uh, also that rules are exportable. They're importable as well, but um, as Drupal people, we, we do tend to like things that we can stick into code to move them around or uh, otherwise just get them uh, versioned. So, uh, oh yeah, and the other thing is that picking out the right pieces and, and building your rules correctly can be a little tricky. Uh, so this is another case where if you get confused about something or you're the rules don't seem to be operating the way you would expect. Uh, actually looking at the documentation is a good idea. Um, and we will also look at a, at a couple of um, common stumbling blocks here soon. So uh, here are a few common use cases for, um, for using rules. So there are modules that will do this for you, but uh, if a comment is posted, notify the author of that piece of content. You know, that's super simple. But you can do it with rules, and you don't need to look at any of the, you don't, you don't you need to use comment notify module or messaging and notifications or anything like that. It's just rules can do that for you, and it's really easy. Um, a slightly more complex example of the, same, of the same thing would be if a comment is posted, notify other people who have commented on the same piece of content. Or otherwise, look at the node and see, see who else might be interested in it in whatever way you want to define. And, uh, and notify those people. One that I have used is if a post is updated or if it is commented upon, notify subscribers. And you would define subscribers as people who, uh, you can use flag module to do this by uh, letting people opt in to notifications on a particular node. Um, and that's uh, pretty, pretty neat, I thought, when I found out that rules could do it. Um, Another one is, say you're using any of the uh, modules that let you buy stuff, and within some unit of time after people have made a purchase, perhaps you would like to follow up with them and say, hey, you know, perhaps you would like to leave a review for, the, for this thing that you bought, or, you know, do you want to buy another thing, or just, you know, we miss you, come, come say hi, you should call your mother. Um, you, can, uh, you can do that as well. This is where a rule scheduler comes in. Uh, another instance that I've uh, run into is if you run forums and you uh, are having problems with spam, you could do uh, something where you let people, you let a site administrator mark uh, with one click a node that is spammy and delete it or unpublish it and then block the user who posted it. So, um, or, you know, delete that user as well. So there's a being able to do things like this in one click is, uh, there's a, a module called rules link that will let you execute rules components with a click. Um, also pretty cool. Okay, so uh, those are the slides. And uh, I was thinking that, I, that we could actually take a look at, um, at the UI here and how some of these things are built. I have uh, some of these pre-built already, but it, I just wanted to stop here and see if there are any questions so far, or if there's a particular one of these, or some other kind of rule that we could look at trying to put together right now. Uh, so any questions or any preferences on what comes next? Yes? I don't know the first thing that I, that I thought of, and I think sometimes one way of responsibilities is actually to train people on our system, you know? And there's some do's and don'ts, but I don't have anything set up that would prevent them from doing it, even though they could. I'm just wondering if there would be, with rules, if you, a certain action was done that they could actually get some sort of an email saying, hey, you were told that you can't do that, and why did you do it? You know, go fix it. But I, that would really depend on how granular you can get with getting something quicker. Right, so uh, something that I didn't mention about rules is that you can write, uh, if, if there does not exist a trigger 
for a, for a particular kind of action, you can write your own. So if you're if you're uh, just for for anybody who might watch this later, the question being, you know, if if there, people are doing something that they shouldn't necessarily be doing, and you want to um, send them an email to tell them not to do that anymore, um, if you don't see an action that that exists already, you can you can write your own, um, which is something that we will probably not look at today, but but it is possible. Um, yes. About workflow. Uh, somebody submits content. Yeah, I mean, you, you can you can do workflow stuff. I mean, it, it, in that sense, it uh, it just becomes up to you how you want that to work. So you could um, you could set a particular content type that's going to be workflow enabled to be unpublished when it's submitted and and not give users permission to publish the thing. So they could submit it, and you could have a rule that fires. Sending an email to all of to everybody. Uh, there's a built-in um, action that sends email to all users of a certain role. Um, so if you have moderators, or if you just have one user in particular that you'd like to email, you can just kick off that message to those people and say, "Hey, a new thing was just submitted. Here's a link to it. Go look at it." And then those people could get in there and publish it. That's a that's a really simple example. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you can build all kinds of workflow stuff um, this way. So, um, and I can show you how to do that. In fact, let's just, uh, just do that right now. So, on this uh, example site here, I'm going to look. I don't, I don't remember if I have. All right, I have. Yeah, okay. So, I have an administrator user and then a few sample moderators and then just some, some uh, you know, mortals. And uh, for roles, what do we have? All right. Oh, sorry, what I meant was permissions. Um, so my authenticated users can't do a whole lot, but let's, um, let's see about on the article content type. If I can let people create some, yeah, I'll let authenticated users create some content. I might need Masquerade to really show this properly. Um, well, anyway, let's let's just dive into the rules UI and then and then we'll uh, we'll get there. So this is um, under config workflow rules. And so on this example site, I have um, all the core rules modules enabled. Um, I don't think I have any any contributed ones that are rule specific here, but I also have Drupal Commerce and uh, and Flag might be enabled. I do not remember now. But anyway, point is that uh, by default. Um, Commerce and Ubercart both use rules to handle a lot of stuff that happens. So there, are all of these rules in this list are either ones that I created uh, for now, which are have this uh, custom status. These are ones that you created. Some of them are, are ones that I created. All the custom ones are ones that I created, and then the default ones came, I think, entirely from Drupal Commerce, and it certainly looks like it. Um, and so default means that it's a it's a rule that is in code, provided by a module in some way, um, which is why it does not have a delete um, operation over here. But they all have edit. So as with anything that's exportable in Drupal, if, you, uh, if it's provided in code, you can almost always still edit it, and then a copy of that thing is made in the database, and it overrides the version that's in code until you update your code version again. So. Um, We'll look at the workflow thing uh, in a little bit, but first I want to show you just how some of these simple ones work. So this is the, uh, the rule for when a comment is posted on an article. So the first thing that I have here is the event. And uh, I already have this one built in, and I cannot edit it. I can only delete it. So just to show you what the UI for this looks like, I'm going to start with this. When you first create a rule from scratch, this is the first thing that you see. Uh, and you get the list of events that you can react to. So like I said, these are all, almost entirely equivalent to some sort of hook. Um, you just get them grouped in a nice list here. And when you have Drupal Commerce enabled, there are a whole bunch that relate to your store. But as you can see, they're, they're grouped. And so I've got you know a comment was viewed, deleting a comment, before, uh, after saving a new comment, before saving a new comment, and after updating an existing one. Uh, Lots and lots of stuff related to your store. Anyway, you get the point. There's a lot of stuff in here. So um, there are things that rules can't do. 
but there are not a lot of things that rules can't do. So uh, generally speaking, your imagination tends to be the limit, especially if you are comfortable writing some code. You get in there and look at the uh, rules API, which uh, I should add is So here is rules, and it's got all this stuff here, but uh, there is an API file here with um, a bunch of things that you might not be able to read, I can't tell. Uh, let, me, let me bump this up a little. So you have lots and lots of hooks for defining new actions and all kinds of goodies here. So just, uh, like I said, we're not going to... We're not going to write any uh, custom stuff using the rules API today, but it does come with, with an API.php file that is quite nice, so check it out. Um, so, point is, we're going to, for this one, we're, uh, we're looking for a comment posted on an article and we're going to notify the author, so we just need to say, all right, what I, what I want to do is when a new comment is saved, I'm going to want to do some stuff. And for a lot of these, actions that are related to content, you'll have the opportunity to choose the type of content that they apply to. You do not have to do this, um, but if you are dealing with a particular content type that, uh, where it's, you know, it's only the article content type or a blog post content type for something like this, um, it does make your life slightly easier later. Um, if, if you're able to restrict it here, you might as well. Um, it just makes things a little more complicated a little later if you don't, and I'll show you how. Okay, so getting back to this. We have our events, and then there are conditions here. So we don't need that for now because we've already chosen the only content type for which this is going to happen. And then we could say, all right, I'm going to add an action to this. And emailing people is found way down here under system. So the two options for emailing uh, just an arbitrary email, there is also send account email down here. But we can just send an email to people. And so once you get into this area, you have two different ways of choosing who's going to, well, in, in this case, we, we need you know who the email is going to be to, the subject, and the message, who it's from, and you can even select the language. But there are two different ways to do, um, to, to enter stuff into these fields and rules. One is the direct, just type it out way, which uses tokens. So if you've, uh, most of us have probably seen token module before, um, or token at, in Drupal 7 is partially in core, and then there's the uh, token module contributed add-on. But it's just, you know, these special strings that get substituted for a, uh, or for which the real value is substituted when the rule executes. So here, we want to send the email to the author of the node, and we could do that using tokens. Um, this is a comment, so we start with the comment. Now, what I actually want is the author of the node, uh, or rather, the yeah, the author of the node upon which this comment was posted. And there is not, the token for that is not directly shown here. I happen to know that it's just... Whoops, I don't know if capitalization actually matters for this, but, but this, this would be the token that I'd want. Um, it's not shown there, and that's not really a big deal. Um, so you could put it in that way as a token, but we can switch to this other way of choosing the thing, um, which, as I recall, I haven't used the Drupal 6 version uh, in quite some time, but I think this was a new feature in Drupal 7. And so this data selector is jQuery UI powered and lets you do a sort of drill down into the properties of that, uh, of that thing. And so now, uh, by doing this, I could say, all right, I'm looking at the comment that was posted, and I want all the properties. So I have the static ones here, like the comment ID and uh, so forth. What I'm actually interested in is the node upon which this comment was posted. And so if I click this, now I can see the next level of stuff. And I could sort of go down um, all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of levels here, and I can get all the way down to the author's mail. I think that if I, now that I said this before about the, uh, about the comment author, and that was the, uh, that was the one I used, that, uh, it turns out that might not have actually been true. I might need to use the uh, mail field directly like this. 
So basically, this just lets you build a token dynamically. It's pretty sweet. Um, I can zoom in a bit. So there you go. Um, that's uh, that's how that looks. And then for the subject, I can say a new comment was posted. Now I could say this by itself, but that would suck for uh, for your email threading. So it might be nice to substitute the uh, the actual node title here. So we can do the same. Uh, same kind of deal, and for this, because I'm actually inserting a string followed by a token, I need to use the tokenized version. So, scroll down to comment node. And you could, use, if you forget what it is, you could use the, uh, oops, too many, too many square braces. You could use the data selector to figure out what it is, or you know, look elsewhere in the, in the Drupal UI to figure out what that token is, and eventually you'll, you'll come back and find that it's, it's this. So we've got this, and now, now we'll have a unique subject for, uh, for everyone that comes in. Um, and we could say, hey, thought you'd like to know that a comment was posted. And you can do things like include the text of the comment in here if you like to save this person the uh, trouble of having to actually go to the site to find out. Here's what was said. Great. OK, and then uh, for the from address, we can just leave this blank to have it come from the site's general email, which um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to run into issues with uh, sending emails from, uh, like you could send it you know, from the comment author if you wanted to, but um, depending on how your mail system is configured, you, I'm starting to see issues of, uh, of emails getting bounced if they're not uh, if there isn't an SPF um, record in the DNS for uh, for that particular host, so um, so it's usually a good idea to leave this as certainly as something that comes from the domain on the originating site. Okay, so that's all done. We can save this, and now uh, we have a rule for comment posted on an article. So if I go back to this site and whoops, let's go to the home page. How about that would be a little more useful. And uh, let's first add an article. Fabulous. And now I can add a comment. And I, I have my, uh, my fake SMTP server running here. Actually, I don't need these. So um, I don't know if you guys use, uh, use this kind of thing, but it's, it's pretty handy when you're testing things that, uh, that send notification emails. The, the one that I use is uh, it's just this Java app called Fake SMTP. There's another one for, for the Mac called Mock SMTP, I think, which gives you a, a nicer non-Java uh, UI. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It will just intercept. Um, it, it, it's as if um, Postfix is running, and uh, it will intercept the mail, and, and uh, you don't actually run into issues of email going out um, when you're when you're working on a on a testing site. So um, here is my comment. All right, let's see if that worked. Okay. So oh, and I it's, this is gonna actually try and open in my mail app. But uh, it actually worked. So I don't even know if this is going to, my email is going to work on UCI, but there we go. So, uh, so this worked. Cool, cool. I have two of them. Uh, I can't remember. I might have a second rule to find that out. That also. Uh, oh yeah. I, I, in fact, I, I'm I'm quite sure I do. But uh, anyway, the, so it works. Fabulous. Um, one thing with this particular rule that maybe you might want to change, which is if the author posts. Uh, on their own comment, perhaps they would not like to be among those that receive the notifications. They, they don't necessarily need to hear that they, they posted a comment because they know they did it. So let's intercept this with a condition. Let's zoom this out slightly here. It's a little alarmingly big for me. OK, so there are lots of conditions that we can add to this rule. The one that uh, I find myself using you know, pretty much all the time is the data comparison. And so this, this lets you say, all right, is this, I mean, it's, it's just a comparison. It's, you know, 
pretty uh, pretty straightforward. So what I what I want to do is look at the author of this comment and see if it is the same person as the author of the node. So I have the comment and I'm going to look at the author and this also supports type ahead. So that's neat. So I'm going to look at the comment author, and I'm going to see if it is the same. You know, I have uh, one of if I have something that returns a list. Um, but right now, I just want to know, is this equal to the comment node author? And now, uh, down here, instead of having equals and unequals up here, and uh, you know, is one of or is not one of, you can just negate this. So what I actually want is to say, if, this, if these things are not equal, only then do I want to execute the rule. So just to, just to be clear here, so what, what was happening before is any time that anybody posted a comment, the author would get a uh, notification. So what I'm saying here is when a comment is saved, I'm going to check, is my comment author not equal to the node author? And then, and only then, will the, will the action execute. Does that make sense? I see at least one confused face. So the negate means don't do it. Yeah, it, it basically just t turns the equal into not equal, and the is one of into is not one of. Yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're, you're welcome to do that. You could set it so you only hear when you're the one that uh, commented on something, and, and no other notifications from anybody else. Um, the, on, on your very... Uh, your, your, megalomania, your megalomaniacal blog, um, you, are, you are welcome to do it that way. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how to build a, a really basic one. Um, and uh, let's see, we're up to 9.30 here, so we're, we're okay. Um, and just being able to do just these, um, these initial bits is super powerful just by itself. If you, if you were to use nothing else, it's still really handy. Um, but let's take a little peek at some stuff that's a, that's a little outside of just the basic, um, the basic use of rules that I know, like, a, this, this is the sort of thing that I, you know, was doing like four years ago or something. Um, so the things get a little more interesting when you start looking at rules components. Um, and I, I know uh, until somewhat recently, I didn't even know what the frig they were. So a rules component is just a bundle of stuff which can be either a rule, uh, just you can define a rule as a component. It can be a combination of conditions. It can be a combination of actions. It's basically anything that you would want to reuse in rules itself or if you want those rules to be executed by another module. So what, what do I mean by that? So if you bundled up a bunch of stuff, uh, if, or if you wanted a rule to fire uh, when you were using, say, views bulk operations, or if you use the admin views module that is actually powered by views bulk operations, if you want to set up an action that does not come with views bulk operations to do some stuff to your nodes or whatever, um, you build it as a component, and then it becomes available to those other modules. It also becomes available to rules itself. So I will show you what I mean by that now. Um, an example that... Uh, that where we're talking about getting rid of another contributed module and substituting it for rules is the scheduler module, um, which, don't get me wrong, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't like these, these modules, they're good, but, uh, but you don't necessarily need to use them if you are, are comfortable using rules. So if you want to set up a workflow where people can post something but not have it actually published on the site until sometime later, you can do that with rules scheduler. So on the article content type, if we look at the fields, I've set up a field here called publishing date. So the idea is that I've set the article content type to default to being not published. And then we're going to look when, when I save the node at this publishing field, and then later on when, uh, when that date comes, rules will take care of, uh, of publishing this, or you know, rules in combination with, uh, with the cron job will publish the thing for you. And here is how that works. So jump back here. So the first thing that we need to do when you're, when you're working with rules scheduler, you need to build a component to do whatever the thing is that you want to happen later. So in this case, that is publish a node. I've already set this up. And with, um, when you're creating a new component, you can choose its type. 
And so, like I said, you can build, reuse, like, so the, the other thing about rules components is that you can create, if you're going to create a bunch of rules that are kind of similar, but, uh, but need to do slightly different things, you can build up a set of conditions and share them across rules. You can also build action sets. So when you get to that bottom part of the rules UI, if you don't want to have to, you know, do the same, uh, the same steps over and over again, you can just build up an action set. You can also build an entire rule with all of its, uh, all of its pieces and just save it as a component. And then you can build a rule set. And we're getting super meta here because it's just a set of rules that execute one right after the other. Um, so basically any single piece of rules can be built as a component. I've already built this one called publish a node, so we'll just take a look at it here. Uh, I don't care what, the, I, I'm not going to use any conditions here because the idea is that, um, oh yeah, uh, to step back, after you have chosen uh, the, uh, the type of, of component that you're going to create, rule says, all right, give it a name, you can tag it or whatever, and then you can give it basically arguments. So in this case, I know that I'm going to want to publish a node later. So I'm going to publish a node later, so I need to know which one. Uh, so that will become an argument that will be passed into this component. And as with everything else, we have a giant pop-up menu of a whole bunch of stuff. And in this case, uh, I mean, I could say any entity, you know, the, but I'm, I'm going to get at least somewhat specific here. So I know that it's going to be a node. And you can give it all the arguments you want. Um, it can go on forever. But uh, I know that I just need the node. So you give it a label that will be used later um, to help you figure out what you did. And then the machine name which should be named something sensible. And then the usage over here, there are parameters and there are, then there are provided things. Uh, I actually, this is, this is one of those things where I said I'm late to the rules party. I still don't fully have my head wrapped around what provided means. I know that uh, a parameter means something that is passed into the rule and provided means something that is output by the rule. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if that, that is something that works when you're chaining rules together or what, but um, and if anybody knows, feel free to uh, raise your hand and chime in right now. If not, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, so, so anyway, I, uh, I've said, all right, I know that I need to figure out what the node is at, the, at that time. So, so cool. That will be my parameter. And that parameter will be used in any subsequent actions. Actually, maybe in the conditions too, but I know I need it for the actions. So we'll go through the creation step of this, actually. You can see it again. So what I'm going to do is take an action, and that action will be to publish some content. What content will that be? So this is where the machine name of the parameter and the label show up. So I just know that I need to publish that node. It's, you know, no big deal. That's it. Let's make sure I didn't, I didn't just do that twice. Okay, cool. So... We still don't have the part that says publish it when, but we don't need that in the component. The component is only the part that's going to be scheduled by rule scheduler. So let us return to yeah. Okay. So now that I have that component that actually executes the action I want, I can set up another rule, which is called publish the node later. So remember I said that you need to, for rule scheduler to work, you need to have the thing that you want to happen later bundled up as a component. In this case, it's just an action. And it's super simple. So before I save the article, that was the event I chose here. In this case, I decided, oh, I'm going to look at the node and make sure that it is not currently published. Because if, I'm, if I actually do want to publish this thing immediately, I can just check the, by default, unpublished uh, checkbox and then rules will ignore it. So we'll look at ones that are unpublished. And then the, the fun part is the schedule later evaluation, which you will find in an option group called rules scheduler. So schedule component evaluation. And then I have a selection of any components that I've defined. I just have a couple here. So publish a node, save it. Okay, so now, scheduled evaluation date. You can hard code this. Um, 
So if you wanted all of your nodes to be only published on one date ever, um, you know, if you're if you're building your if if you have your Mayan calendar out and you know that the world is going to end, and you want everything to be published one hour before that happens, you are you will be ready to go. You can just publish everything all on a, on a certain date. That is not in our case all that useful. We want to actually use the field that was defined by uh, uh, that's that's part of the content type. So I'll use the data selector here again. So here is the node that is being saved. And I have all of its fields. So it's a date field, and that's all I need. So now I'm publishing this node on this time. OK, with rule scheduler, there's another uh, sort of tricky little bit, which is that it needs an identifier. So the reason that it has this is because you could be scheduling multiple. Uh, what happens is these, to step back, uh, rule scheduler builds up a queue of actions that are going to be scheduled to happen later. And each one of them as an identifier. Because it's the same rule that's being triggered multiple times, but it still needs to save all of its stuff. So it's okay, all right, I'm going to save node, uh, I'm going to publish node one on this date. I'm going to publish node two on that date, and so forth. So you need to build up an identifier that, uh, that identifies that task and maps it onto that node. And also, let's say that I'm going to publish node one on, you know, September 10th, but then I change my mind later and I want to publish node one on September 13th. So if, I, if rules did not have these identifiers and could not check them, I could end up publishing it first on one date and then trying to do it again on the other date. So what this means is, I'm gonna, you, this is just a string. So I'm going to say uh, publish node, and then what I would like to do is give each one a unique identifier so that if I redo it, there's something that will, uh, well, just to, just to not bury the lead here, I insert the token for, uh, I'm, I'm just using the node ID because it seems to make sense. So then what will happen is when a uh, rule scheduler schedules this, if it's node 1, it will drop in 1. And if I redo it, it will find that same identifier and overwrite the action with the new value. Um, and it will not deal with the one that I set for node 2. Um, this will make sense, when I, uh, even a little more sense, hopefully, when I, when I show you the end result. But, okay, so I've done all that stuff, and now I need to know which node to publish, which was my uh, saved content. So, save that. And I have two of these scheduled now. I only need one, because I you know, did this before. So get rid of the one, get rid of the duplicate. Okay, cool, cool. Now let's add another article. Call this publish later. Publish layer, yes, that's what I meant. Then I have my field down here. So let's just schedule it for tomorrow. Make sure this is not published. And save. Okay, so my node ID is four. Now if I want to see what is scheduled, just go up to rules. Uh, by the way, I, I'm I assume probably everybody is using admin module, uh, admin menu module, but you know, just in case, uh, you know, it's nice. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here are all of my scheduled things, and apparently I I must have uh, misphrased that because uh, the identifier is dropped here, so uh, we'll have to look at that. But uh, anyway, you can see from some of these other ones that I've, I've done previously that each one gets its uh, gets an identifier, and then rules will will override it if you've uh, if you've done it right. And then you can delete any of these if you change your mind and you're an administrator uh, and you're a control freak. <laughs> um, and th this is, you know, this is also filterable by the uh, by the executable component. Yes, sir. If you have a rule that deletes a scheduled uh, rule, actually, you can. Other... Yeah. So uh, we'll just go, just drop in here. And looking at these actions, if I drop down to the rule scheduler area, delete scheduled tasks. So yeah, then you can uh, you can override them using rules. Yes. What about can you use rules to set up to actually automate? Um, what I want to say, approving of them to the users if they have like a specific email, say I've got X Y Z. 
and I've got 2,000 employees, and I certainly don't want to have to go through here and input all that information. Sure. Okay, so the question was, can you, um, can you use rules to automate the approval of, um, of new users based on some criteria? Um, that's one that I've never done. I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but let's take a look. So um, I'm assuming that the idea would be that you are letting users register themselves, but they're registered as blocked users, and they, they aren't. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but let's, let's check it out. So... Approve um, company X users. Um, by the way, you can when you're creating your rules, you can change the machine name if you like. Um, when you if you're um, exporting your rules to code and you want nice machine names, that's you know just like a lot of other things in Drupal, that's how you would do that. So we're going to look at users, and so I have various actions here um, after users have logged in or out, and after saving a new user account looks like a good one to me. So we'll do that and save this. Okay, so what I want to do is approve the user. So we'll start with the action and just say we're going to, uh, going to set a property on that user. I can't remember if I need to do this as entities or if I can just, yeah, here we go. All right, so I have an action that will unblock a user. And the, uh, the data selector is, is already set up to be the registered user, so I don't need to do anything except save it. Okay, so the trick here is the condition. So let's look at these conditions. And again, I just need to use the data comparison. And so you were saying you wanted to look and see if this person is from a certain company. You might check that by their email address. So let's look at what we've got here. Okay, so all I have right now is equals and one of. So we need a different kind of operator. And now what I'm trying to remember is if there are rules uh, modules that will give you uh, a contains. So I think I might need a different, different type of action. Let me see. Or a different type of condition, rather. Text comparison. I think this is what I really want. Yep, okay. There we go. That's, that's, that's the stuff. So, so I'm going to look at the account mail, and I'm going to say, are they from example.com, and just use the contains. You can also use starts with and ends with. I guess, you know, for something like this, it might be slightly more efficient to use ends with, and uh, save it. And so now, that's your rule. Um, did that make sense? Um, okay, great. Yeah. Is it uh, where? where so the question is: Is this uh, can it, can view, uh, rules do a query to check if uh, if a user's oh, yeah. email is in some some other list already? Where is that other list? Well, right now, like a flat file, but it could be like a database. Uh, I could put it in any kind of. Database. I'm pretty sure that uh, that the comparisons that are in here are probably not going to cover that for you. Um, I'm just looking to see what, what we've got here. I think at that point you're gonna you would need to write some custom code that would actually do the comparison for you. Um, the the code for that is not super difficult. Uh, do you have a uh, is is that another question or a comment? No, I, I just want to expand on this. I mean, if you've got a data source somewhere, I think if you bring it into Drupal as sort of a node or a view or whatever, it's going to be Yeah, if you Right. So the 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 other uh, the other comment on this was that if you can get the the data into Drupal already, then then you can probably use some of these other things, checking a, a, a special entity to see if it contains that that data or something. Or you, I, yeah, I guess you could bring all those things into a field, something like that. I know for, for my part, I, I would definitely be inclined to write a little custom code to, to do the interface to the other thing if it were very complicated, or, or if it were a very complicated source with a ton of data, but, um, but yeah, that would totally work. But you can schedule a cron job that would import yes. to a node, valid emails for your system, and then 
and your process could check that if it's valid, then they can. Yep, you could you could then do a, a comparison on that special node and look at it at that field on that node that has all that stuff and and see if it's in there. Um, yeah, that that would absolutely work. You actually answered the question. Yeah, darn right I did. All right. Um, <laughs> So, um, so yeah, that's, um, that is how scheduler works. And so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look back at those slides and see if there was another one that was super fun. We, okay, so yeah, we covered scheduler. I guess another thing that I, that I like is the fact that uh, the rules interacts, it plays nice with flag. So just real quick, um, let's see, we'll, we'll just go with when a, when we're saving new content. Um, notify subscribers. I don't even know if I have a flag set for this. Oh, actually, the other thing I want to show you is if I don't restrict this by type, here's here's a wackiness ensues when when you do not set the type um, initially, and by wackiness I mean wackiness in your mind, um, because then you could look. Uh, you might go in here and you're looking at the data comparison because you say, all right, I want to look at some field on my node, and you go in here and you're like. What the frig are my fields? So um, as you can see in the data selectors here, none of the, I don't get just a, an exhaustive list of every field that is defined on every node. Um, this is something that, that uh, trips a lot of people up when they start working with rules. So if you don't preset the, uh, the entity type, you need to use either entity is a bundle or type or entity has field. You need to use one of these comparisons first to restrict things down to that to that one or you know the the list of content types that you actually care about, and then the fields that you want to use will become available in the data selector. So let's say I wanted to find out if a node has some field. Or actually, yeah, just node, and then I can. Here is where I get my list of all those fields, and uh, once you've done that, then you can start actually using that field in your rules later on. Um, oops, now did I? Let's go back here. Okay, so, right, after saving the content, I want to notify people. So we'll gra grab that system action to send the mail. And I'm just gonna fill in static values for this because we're running short of time and I just wanna have some action there. So right now it would just send email to everybody and that is dumb. So the thing that I want now is to look at this flag stuff. So flag provides lots of lots of goodies here. What I'm interested in right now is the subscribers. So that, that would mean users who have flagged this node as, th as something that they're interested in and would like to be notified about later. And looking through this, I see, okay, node is flagged. That sounds good, right? Let's use that. All right, so they flagged it as their favorite. Okay, yep, the node. User on whose behalf to check. Hmm, okay. Uh, everyone? Yeah, that's not gonna work. So using the node is flagged will not work for you in this case because you can only check for a single user. Uh, you could do a bunch of conditions and do an or on that, but that would be just the worst. So what we really want is to do something down in the actions. This is, this is something that uh, where I, I suddenly was like, oh, rules can do loops, cool. So here is what you need to do. Down, uh, down in the actions, instead of, uh, this, this is uh, a little tricky thing when, uh, when working with flag module and rules together. Uh, it's not a condition, it is, it is a loop under the actions. And so what I want is, oh wait a second. Is it too early in the morning? Am I forgetting how, how to do this? I don't want those. I want, yeah, give me the loop, and then, where is it? There's a, there's a loop in here called uh, users, who, uh, users who have flagged the node, and this is, uh, where did I put it? 
All right, first, first thing we always do, I think fl all, all the flag stuff I need is actually enabled. Yeah, there's no, there's no special integration. So, this first. I am having a total blank out on how this part works. Does anybody in here, have you, have you set this up before? If not, I'm going to go to another site that I've set up that actually does use this and figure out what I forgot. So I don't see any hands, so let's just check it out right quick. This is a site that I'll be talking about a little later. Got a bunch of rules. That's what I got to do. I, okay, so it, it is an action. That's that's the thing that I'm, that I'm uh, forgetting here. So the action that I want to add is filed down here under flag. There we go. All right. Fetch users who have flagged a node. And so then I get to choose the flag. And I have the node. It's, it's already there. So now I can call this subscribers. And I'll call this variable name subscribe users. Okay. So that's the first action that I need to take. This is the, this is the thing. When, when I said that it's tricky, like even though I've actually set this thing up before, uh, it's easy to forget. So I've forgotten, uh, yeah, I've forgotten. I've now fetched all of the users who have flagged that node. Now I'm able to loop over those people. Right. Yep. So the, the order matters. So now that I've defined that action, now I have this. Uh, remember, I set set up the subscribe. Uh, I guess I spelled it subscriber users. Um, subscribe users. And now I have a current list item which I will be able to use subsequently. So I will just call this subscribed user. And I actually will call that subscriber there because why not? No, let's be consistent. Okay, so I have fetched users who have flagged the node, and now I'm going to be able, now when I say add this loop, now I have this collection of everybody who's flagged the node, and now to each of them, I'm going to be able to send an email. And so I will add an action here. And use the system send mail action. I'll switch to the data selector for this. And here is my subscribed user. In the mail. So la di da. And this is how it looks after you've done that. I'm trying to remember actually, I've never yeah, okay. So you don't have to define you don't have to click this to define the action. You could use it here and then just drag it under the loop. Um, and so this is this is the way that you act on collections of stuff. Um, there are you, you might have seen in the data selector that, that it also appears to give you direct access to the loop. Um, what the hell are you talking about, monkey? I hear you say. Um, let's go back to that action and just look at it again. Switching to the data selector. Okay, so the, subscri the subscriber users list that I defined here, this also appears here, but don't be fooled because this tries to, th this will just give you access to specific indexes in that list. Um, and you don't really want that. You just, you just want it to act on every single one. So, you know, like I say, don't be fooled. So, say for instance you have a shop that sells things and you have, like, people are interested in extra small size clothes or Louis Vuitton purses or whatever. And you're the shop owner, so you've got a bunch of people who have subscribed to those kind of topics. Uh -huh. If they add an article saying, oh, we just got 50 Louis Vuittons, when they publish that, this can trigger an email from people who have signed up for the Louis Vuitton index. Yes. Yeah, I mean, as long as, so the, okay. the way I would imagine doing that is, 
so the the posted article you need to have some way of mapping the subscribers to the the type of content the, the question was basically can um, can users be notified that something has been posted if it is somehow mapped onto some interest of theirs so the, the way I would picture that is uh, in Drupal 7 taxonomy terms which is to say tags are something that you can flag so I would present a user interface to your um, that so, somehow, how you do this is, is up to you, but basically you can flag taxonomy terms. So they would have a, a list that they could check off areas of interest. Yes, or, or, and you could even do something like on the, uh, on the page that shows you know, the, the products, the Louis Vuitton purses or whatever, um, there could be a tag on there that says, you know, this, this is a Louis Vuitton thing, and you know, here's, a, here's a little checkbox that you can say to, you know, Email me when there's more stuff like this, and then you can use this to uh, to check that to check the taxonomy terms on a piece of posted content, so and then say and then say email everybody who is subscribed to that taxonomy term. So would that be set up as a trigger of some kind? So like the next day or that day as soon as it posts, there's some kind of once if I were writing an article saying we got these at what point does you you tell it, so the. Uh, as soon as I save an article. It could be as soon as you save it. It could be something where you save it and then you use the rule scheduler to do it later, um, like a day later or something. Or, but there is a trigger that says when content is posted, do some stuff, and oh, so that's okay. so that's the way you would define the rule. Any yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and we're we're out of time. So uh, any any other questions? Come on up here while I'm breaking down, um, and uh, thank you for coming. <laughs>